Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulillah ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecma'in ve ba'd. Inşallah today I wanted to talk about a couple of uh, ayat, a passage from Surah Ali Imran. And very appropriately yesterday we spoke about um, the topic of marriage and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the issue of strengthening our marriages through spirituality and through our relationship with Allah. So very appropriately, inshallah, today, the passage we're going to talk about is going to talk about children and how to, what should be the focus of the parents when they are expecting a child to join their family when Allah is blessing them with a child and what should be the focus of the parents when raising this child and nurturing this child. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an in Surah Ali Imran, we recited it today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about Maryam, the mother of Isa. And Isa alayhi salam, his mother Maryam, salamun alayha, is a very important key figure um, in the Islamic faith. And uh, she's very prominently mentioned and spoken about in the Qur'an. And she was a woman of very, very noble character and very many noble qualities and a very admirable woman who is a role model for all the believers. And her name has been permanently attached with the name of Isa alayhi salam. Throughout the Quran, the only prophet mentioned ever with the name of one of his parents is Isa alayhi salam. Allah, many times when he speaks about Isa alayhi salam, he says, Isa ibn Maryam, Isa the son of Maryam. This is the only prophet who is addressed or who is spoken about in this manner throughout the Quran. So she's a very noble and a very important figure. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the birth of Maryam. Not just about Isa alayhi salam, he takes us all the way back to Maryam. That when Maryam's parents, and it mentions the name of Maryam's father, and the name of Maryam's father was Imran. So Allah says, إِذْ قَالَتِ امْرَأَةُ Imran. When the wife of Imran, she said, and she was expecting a child, she was pregnant, she was expecting a child, and they were expecting a baby. She said, Rabbi inni nadartu laka ma fi batani muharrara. She said, O oh Lord, I have intended, I have given, I have sworn to make that whichever, that which is in my womb, in my, in my belly, I have sworn and I have made an oath to make it free. Muharrara, free. And the scholars explain that what it means here is free of any obligations. Free of any worldly expectations. No responsibilities, no obligations, no expectations in terms of any material things or any worldly things. But rather, she, what, the child that is in my womb, the mother of Maryam is saying, will be solely dedicated to the service of Allah. My intention, she's saying my intention with this child is that it should first and foremost serve Allah and serve the deen of Allah. And that's my intention with this child that is coming. A very, very noble intention. And a very high and strong intention. Something that's very difficult to say. Extremely difficult. I have no expectations of my child. I don't want anything out of the child other than it that serves Allah and serves the religion of Allah and pleases Allah. That's it. Very powerful intention. Extremely powerful intention. But what we'll see here is when there's that type of a focus, a proper perspective, a pure intention, when, when, when the parents are that focused, and they have this perspective, you'll see the results of it. She says, فَتَقَبَّلْ minni, Accept this from me. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ سَمِيُّ alim. You are all hearing and all knowing. So then the ayat go on, and it talks about how when she did finally give birth, Inni wala'atuha untha. She ended up giving birth to a daughter. Now this apparently complicated issues. This complicated the situation. Because as a son or a boy, it's understood how that boy was supposed to serve the deen and serve Allah. But now this is a girl, this is a daughter, this is a whole other situation. How is this going to work out? And she even says, Wa laysa dhakarukaluntha. Allah says that boys are not like girls. It's a completely different circumstances. How is this going to work? The rules are different. The situation is different. How is a girl supposed to serve the deen? How is she supposed to dedicate her life, her services to Allah and to the religion of Allah? But nevertheless, the parents of Maryam did not lose their focus. 
They said, look, we made an intention. We're going to follow through with our intention. How it's going to work, we don't know. But oh Allah, we leave it to you. Inni sameituha Maryam. The first thing they said is we name her Maryam. I name her Maryam. Give her a good name, a pure name, a beautiful name. Scholars of language, they mention the Mufassirin. I read here and there, they mentioned that um, in the original language, in their language, the name Maryam actually meant the one who worships, a worshiping woman. That's what the name translated to. So this, you, you see from this, it's a good name as well. A name that is inclined towards the worship of Allah, towards devotion, dedication to Allah. We should try to choose names like this. These are the type of names we should choose. We should name our children after the great personalities from the history of our religion. After the Sahaba and the Prophets and the women of the Sahaba. Great women and great men who have accomplished great things in the history of our religion. It gives them something to aspire to. So they named their Maryam, And I basically, to summarize, I hand over to Allah. I put my trust in Allah, Allah, you protect her. And you protect her offspring that will come from that. So Allah says, فَتَقَبَّلَهَا رَبُّهَا بِقَبُولِ الْحَسَنِ Allah accepted, not just accepted, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lovingly and in the best manner accepted this sacrifice and this sign of this, this great devotion and dedication that the parents of Maryam made. وَأَنْبَتَهَا نَبَاتًا حَسَنًا And this is the focus. The result of that, when that focus was there, when that understanding was there, when that perspective was there, the result of that was, وَأَنْبَتَهَا نَبَاتًا حَسَنًا Allah raised her in the most beautiful manner. So she grew up to be devoted and dedicated to Allah, just like the parents intended. This comes right down here. As parents, we have a major role. We impact in the way our children grow up. It's not fair for us that when they grow up and maybe at that time they don't fit our ideas or they don't fit exactly the definition of religiousness that we might have in our minds, then at that time we criticize them. And we're disappointed in them. What did I do? What focus did I have? What perspective did I have? Even before the child was born and raising the child. What was my focus for myself and for this child? So it's showing here that the parents need to be properly focused beforehand. They need to understand what they're doing here. And then what this is lead to, وَكَفَّلَهَا زَكَرِيَّ Not only that, but then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put her into the care of Zakariya. Zakariya alayhi salam was a prophet of Allah. So see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it continues, this trend continues. When the parents made a good intention, and then they raised her properly, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided even for her an avenue to learn directly from a prophet. Her teacher is a prophet. Her mentor is a prophet. What better teacher and mentor can there be? So as you see the trend continuing, it all goes back to the beginning. The foundation was strong, was solid. Everything being put on top of that foundation is now strong. And then it tells a very beautiful story here in this passage that even though Zakaria was a prophet, look at her level of understanding and her relationship with her creator and how focused she is, that the prophet is learning a lesson from her. She's teaching her own teacher a lesson. She's bringing perspective to her own mentor who is a prophet. فَلَمَّا دَخَلَ عَلَيْهَا زَكَرِيَا الْمِحْرَابِ Zakaria one time came into the masjid, mihrab, this area. وَجَدَ عِنْدَهَا رِزْقَ He saw her eating some fruit that was not of the season. Something that should not have been available at that time and at that place. And he said, where did you get this from? Where did you find this? أَنَّا لَكِ هَذَا Where did you get this from? She responded and replied, قَالَتْ هُوَ مِنَ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ Allah gave me this. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَرْزُقُ مَنْ يَشَوْ بِخَيْرِ حِسَابِ Teacher, why are you confused? Why does this confuse you? Allah can give to whoever He wants, whatever He wants, however He wants. Allah doesn't have any limits or restrictions. Why does this confuse you? He realized. And as a side note, Zakaria, the Prophet, had one situation. His situation was that he was very old, and his wife was very old, but they didn't have any children. And he very, very badly wanted children. But now they were so old, he figured, you know, that's it, I can't have children now. So he realized, he said, look at what this girl is saying. Allah is not bound by any restrictions. Right there and there he made dua. 
He made dua right there and, there and then. He said, Rabbi habli milla dunka thurriyatan tayyiba. Oh Allah, you grant me good, beautiful offspring. Grant me offspring, grant me children that are good, pious, righteous. And the news and the good news came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to him. While he was still standing there in the mihrab, He's still standing there making his dua, making his supplication. Immediately his prayer is answered. That Allah is sending you the good news that you will have a son. His name will be Yahya and he will be a messenger just like you. This is, this is the understanding. And this is all, once again, connecting back to Maryam. Now I was talking about how when the parents had that intention. Oh Allah, we want to dedicate this child for your service. Then look at the result. What, what may, many times what gets in our ways? What gets in our way to do something like this? To put religion before anything else and everything else. We're concerned a lot of times about what kind of a living will they make? You know, financial issues, money problems, will they be respected? Will they have a good job? Will they be able to live their lives? These are the type of things that you, like I mentioned after the Eid Rakat today as well, that as shaytan yu'idukum al faqr Right away he scares you from poverty. Well, if you... Focus your children through to, to Islamic education. How are they ever going to feed themselves and have a family and live properly? Be respectable. How is that going to happen? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us. Allah says, وَإِذْ قَالَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةِ The angels came and announced from Allah, Ya Maryam, O Maryam, in Allah has tafaki. Allah has chosen you. He's purified you. He's purely chosen you. وَطَهَرَكِ And He's purified you. وَاسْتَفَاكِ عَلَىٰ نِسَاءِ الْعَالَمِينَ Not only that, but He's chosen you over all the women of the entire world. He's made you superior to all the women in the entire world. That same girl that was dedicated for the service of deen, for the service of Allah, and that's all her parents wanted for her, Allah is announcing in the Qur'an that the angels came to her and said, you have been chosen over all the women of the entire world. Until today, the name of Maryam is preserved in the Qur'an. And Allah has praised her in the Qur'an. And we read this ayah talking about how Maryam was chosen over all the women of the entire world. Look at this. This is the result. This is the result. More honor and more distinction than anyone else. Now we feel honored to name our daughters Maryam. Because of her. Because we look up to her. Because we want them to be like her. So this is the respectability that comes. And not only that, but then as we know, the story goes on, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted upon her, bestowed upon her, the greatest honor that's ever been given to any woman, and that was, she was the bearer of the miraculous conception and birth of Isa alayhi salam. The most amazing birth that's ever taken place in this world was the birth of Isa alayhi salam, without a father. And she was the one by means of which this miraculous birth took place. So the bearer of such great honor, such great distinction, when the focus of the parents was correct. So this is very important. What type of goals do we set for ourselves first and foremost? And then especially what type of goals do we set for our children? We know we want them to go to Ivy League schools. And we want them to marry, you know, the most beautiful spouse. And we want them to marry somebody from the very, very noble family with very high connections and a very high lineage. We have these goals laid out in mind. But do we have the religious goals for them laid out in mind? I want my son or I want my daughter to be a hafiz of the Qur'an. I want them to be uh, a scholar of the religion. I want them to serve the deen. I want them to help people. I want them to be, to follow in the footsteps of the Prophet Do we have these goals? Do we communicate these goals to them? Do we raise them with these goals in mind? That's the question we have to ask ourselves. And one last issue that I'll mention that's mentioned here is many, many times like Allah addresses this in the Qur'an. Look what this woman was able to do, this girl was able to do. We should never underestimate even what our women and our daughters can do for the sake of religion, for the sake of deen. We should never underestimate their, their potential and their capacity to also work for the religion and also establish and make great contributions to the deen and to the ummah. This was a girl as well. And all odds were working against her. Nobody understood how is this girl going to serve deen. But she ended up serving deen in such a legendary historic manner. So similarly, we should never underestimate our girls. We should also teach them 
Just like for our boys, we should also teach them to aspire to contribute great things to this ummah and great things to this religion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to practice everything that we've said and heard. Subhanallah bihamdihi, subhanakallah bihamdik, nashadu wa la ilaha anta nasafir wa